So welcome back everybody. This is Night Flight and today David Case is back. A while ago I did an interview with David about V2K and uh, how you can protect yourself. <coughs> yeah, how you can um, protect yourself against it and uh, we will probably yeah, eliminate a lot of confusion that is going on uh, among listeners uh, concerning the CD. So, first of all, David, thank you so much for coming back on the show. You're very welcome. So, some people uh, say that the CD doesn't work. Um, what? What is it that people might do wrong? Well, uh, I get a lot of people that do not read the instructions, and okay. you have to follow the protocol for it to work. You know, I've had people tell me, well, they played it for 15 minutes, and it didn't do anything, so they said it didn't work. Well, that's not the instructions. You have to play it for three weeks, every night, all night, while sleeping. And even if the headphones come off in the middle of the night, you have to start over. So, you know, you really have to follow the instructions exactly. And then I get some people that will not buy the $19 cost headphones and that, that you must use the cost headphones. And they, they just don't understand why they would have to buy another set of headphones. They have headphones laying all around the house. Why not just use a pair of them? Save $19. Well, that doesn't work because there are frequencies in the sounds on the CD that only come through on certain headphones. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, mainly the ultrasonic sounds. And most headphones only go to 16 kilohertz. Uh, the costs go to 25 kilohertz. They cover a lot more uh, frequency range. Yeah. And and then also, you know, every therapy has a certain success rate. Yeah. And most uh, sound therapies only have about a 20% success rate. So that means 80% of the people that try sound therapies will be disappointed. And that's most sound therapy. Now, my sound therapy, uh, some parts of it, we have 80% success rate, such as idiopathic tinnitus. 80% of the people that try it and follow instructions get good results. Uh, now, reactive tinnitus, there is no sound therapy that is known to help reactive tinnitus what, including what is active uh, tinnitus what is the difference uh, between? well on that type of condition the more sound that enters the ear the louder the ringing gets the, the louder the tinnitus gets so you know you can't add any type of sound therapy to someone that has reactive tinnitus because it will just increase their tinnitus. Yeah. So, you know, I do, I do not recommend mine or any other sound therapy for reactive tinnitus. And then some people around the world uh, hear other phantom sounds, such as clicking sounds. Uh, my sound therapy has a success rate about 80% on clicking about 80% on idiopathic tinnitus. Uh, hearing voices or V2K, uh, my sound therapy has a success rate around 50% if you follow the instructions. Uh, some people around the world, uh, actually their bodies shake or vibrate. They, they feel vibrations all up and down their body. 
and we've had a high success rate helping those, around 80%. And then there's a condition called TTTS, and it's uh, it's almost like you have butterflies in your ears. It's a fluttering sound that people hear. We've got about a 70% success rate on helping that condition. <clears throat> but my whole point is, no matter what you're talking about, medication, sound therapy, there there is a certain amount of people that will try it, and they will not get any results. And that's just a fact because let's say you have a headache. There could be 10 different reasons for that headache. You could take an aspirin, and it could make your headache go away. But the next person takes an aspirin and their headache does not go away because the root uh, reason for the headache, it could be different than other people. So, you know, it, it depends on what is causing your condition, uh, whether a therapy will work or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that is something that we always have even if you have a brilliant doctor and your friend has the same ailment that you have and uh, he did a wonderful job for you and then your friend goes there and it might not work it is very different from person to person yes yeah yeah so um in other words first of all people should uh, check out if they have reactive tinnitus, idiopathic tinnitus. With reactive uh, tinnitus, you said no sound therapy at all. No, and I do have a simple test that they can do on their own to determine whether they have reactive tinnitus. And what you do is sit in a quiet room and you rate the level of your tinnitus from one to 10, write that down, and then yeah. put your fingers, put your fingers in your ears, and then rate your tinnitus again. If it goes down with your fingers in your ears, there's a very good chance you have reactive tinnitus. In mm -hmm. other words, when you shut off the sound going in the ears, on reactive tinnitus condition, the tinnitus lowers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have to say, um, you know, when, when we are talking about tinnitus, what is generally the, the cause of that? I remember, for instance, I many, many years ago, I had a diving accident and I had to go into uh, the uh, decompression chamber. Yeah. So, uh -huh. and then when I was back home, I had to go once more here in Germany. And in that hospital where they put me uh, into the compression chamber, a lot of people, you know, it, it looked when you stepped into it, it looked a little bit like you're sitting on a small bus. There were plenty of seats in there. And then they took us down to uh, 50 meters. And uh, a lot of people uh, were sitting there that were suffering from tinnitus. So do you have any idea how one acquires that? Well, there's very uh, different reasons. Uh, there is natural tinnitus and, and artificial tinnitus. Uh, yeah. Much like, you know, many people hear voices, it is an external signal hitting the skull and it's perceived uh, by the person as voices. And then on the tinnitus, uh, there are things associated with tinnitus that many doctors assume cause the tinnitus. In other words, most people with 
uh, natural tinnitus have hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And the theory is that when you have hearing loss, uh, your, your neural pathways start making connections looking for sound. And, and these are unwanted connections. And it forms a loop similar to a person on a stage with a microphone and there's speakers all around. And if he gets a microphone too close to the speakers, there'll be a squeal. I, I know you've heard that. Uh, and that's called, you know, a feedback loop. Mm -hmm. So what occurs in the brain and the ear brain connection uh, are unwanted connections or a feedback loop. And this just uh, returns, the signal returns over and over and over, forming a ringing or screeching sound. And uh, that is one other thing my CD has been found to improve hearing. And that may be the reason it helps tinnitus. Several forms of tinnitus can be helped by my CD. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been listening to this CD for 20-something years. And my hearing is so good, I can hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's the other thing. They have found out that the reason people are getting hearing loss is from the lack of use of their ears. In other words, if you stop hearing high frequency sounds, let's say uh, all you do every day is talk on the phone, uh, which is very limited frequency, very low frequency, no high tones, nothing in that range. If that's the only sounds you hear are, are limited frequency range, you actually will lose uh, that segment of your frequency range of your hearing. In other words, if you listen to symphony music every day, which has highs and lows, you're most likely not going to get hearing loss. Now, the old adage, if you don't use it, you'll lose it, is what comes into play with this hearing loss. What about nature, being out in nature? Would that help with all the frequencies, not losing yeah, your... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. If you're stuck inside and you don't hear bird songs, uh, no sounds of nature, uh, that could eventually cause you to lose part of your hearing, yes. Okay. So why do we have to wear or listen to the CD at night? Well, we found that uh, when you're in the alpha state sleeping, uh, alpha you're state, more focused. Brain, yeah. You're you're more focused uh, on the sounds of the CD. In other okay. words, in the daytime. Uh, you're looking around, you're thinking of other things, uh, you're distracted. Now, it will work if you play it in a day, but it takes longer to see results. That's why we recommend you play it at night. And, you know, most people have jobs, they can't play it in the daytime. You know, they don't have time. And you have all the time in the world when you're sleeping. And the second reason is, with this high technology that's being experimented on us, uh, at nighttime, you're unconscious and you're more, more vulnerable to experimentation from external sources. In other words, uh, you know, as I explained in the last interview, I was attacked with what's called sonic weapon tinnitus, similar to our diplomats in Cuba. Yeah. And uh, in the daytime, if you are uh, given artificial tinnitus, uh, you know, you will actually be conscious of it. You can hear it. You, you know what is occurring. If you're sleeping and they hit you with sonic weapon 
uh, tinnitus or, or another type of device, you will not realize it because you're in a dream state. So when you play my CD at night, all night, every night, it interferes with that equipment of reading your brain waves and your biosignature. So it is like a firewall for the brain when you're sleeping. And it is more effective uh, at eliminating the symptoms uh, you know, when you use it at night. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it has to be a headphone. Good boxes would not do the trick. Well, on the website, there are three types of headphones. Uh, well, two types of headphones that work and a set of earbuds. Now, the earbuds go into the ear, and uh, they do work, but they are like $69 in the USA. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, they are uh, available for the people that have the money. Now, the costs are very inexpensive. They're only $19 in the U.S. Uh, so that's why I, I, I actually use the cost headphones myself rather than earbuds. And um, so they can use any one of those three that are on the website. but. Uh, there's another way to use the costs that are helpful. In other words, when you're on your side and you have headphones on, they actually will dig into the ear and it's uncomfortable and it's hard to sleep with headphones on. Yeah. So I have a remedy. I have a remedy for that. And what you do is take a cheap foam pillow and cut a hole in it the size of your ear. And when you're on your side, you put a pillowcase over it after you cut the hole out. You put a, uh, and when you're sleeping on your side, that ear with the earphone on it goes right in that hole and is so comfortable, you don't even know you have headphones on. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, again, um, which frequencies the headphone has to cover in order for the CD to have some effect? Well, it's, it's more than that. Uh, in other words, uh, Dr. Dineshin did a study, and he's in the United Kingdom, and he found 2.8 megahertz of harmonics in the sound mix on my CD. Now, it is unheard of for headphones of any type to create, recreate, and uh, put out 2.8 megahertz. It's just not, the headphones aren't designed to do that. And he says the reason the cost headphones are, are producing the 2.8 megahertz is because of a phenomenon called magnetostriction. Mm -hmm. And if, if you, the way I, I can explain it is when you, magnetize a wire, put electricity through it, the wire actually lengthens, and when you take away the electricity, it shortens very, very slightly. So what is occurring when you put a AC or a sound wave through the headphone wires, they're actually lengthening and shortening to the 2.8 megahertz. So they're reproducing that ultra high frequency by way of magnetostriction. And I don't know if you've ever been next to a big transformer, like on a tele or on a pole, or, uh, you know, uh, you'll hear a, you know, there's a hum that comes from a transformer. And there's no speakers in that transformer. There's no reason for sound to come out of that device, except for magnetostriction. The windings in that transformer are actually getting longer and shorter to the 60 hertz that uh, our electric company sends out through the grid. I believe it's 50 hertz in your area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, it is. Okay, yeah. and so, so what you are saying is, 
there is no headphone out in on the market uh, that would work as well? We have tested $300 sets of headphones that go to 50 kilohertz and even higher. And they're very expensive headphones and they do not reproduce the 2.8 megahertz. Okay, good. So yeah. there's something in the construction of these headphones that is assisting the reproduction of the 2.8 megahertz by way of magnetostriction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see that if somebody has a very, very expensive headphone that he or she might think, yeah, well, that, that should do the trick. This is state of the art and uh, there is no need for me to buy another headphone. Right. That would be common thinking, common sense. But in this particular situation, you know, we're dealing with a phenomenon called magnetostriction. And if the construction is not the exact same as the cost, it, it, it will not work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then usually after three weeks, people will notice some relief. Well, we have uh, a small number of people get results the first day. Okay. I'd say around 4%. And then we have some people that take four, five, six, eight weeks to see results. But the average for everyone that has tried this, the average is three weeks, and that's why I recommend the three weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. To your best knowledge, is there any way... Yeah, how shall I say that? How we can protect ourselves so that we do not develop tinnitus in the first place? Well, you know, uh, the artificial tinnitus or what is called idiopathic, it means there's no reason or, or rhyme or reason why the person got it. Mm -hmm. It is most likely caused by artificial means uh, externally. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't anything out there on the market to stop, uh, you know, these weapon systems. And, you know, our diplomats were attacked in Cuba and, you know, it actually caused them brain damage. And, uh, you know, there's really nothing out there other than my CD. And what my CD does is interfere with that uh, equipment, that bio-relevant feedback loop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, and then that's the artificial tinnitus. The natural tinnitus, yes, there are things you can do to prevent. Uh, in other words, some people get tinnitus from medications. Oh. I've actually helped many people uh, reduce or stop their tinnitus. But, you know, I, I, so you want to be careful with medications, uh, other toxicity problems uh, that the body can't handle. Uh, you know, that the, the first area of your body that you will notice when you've done something that's toxic to your body, even poisonings, you get a ringing in the ears because the, the ear is one of the most sensitive organs. So you want to be careful with medications and then also sound induced tinnitus. Uh, I've helped many band members that have been exposed to ultra loud sounds uh, that causes a natural tinnitus. And we have about a 30% success rate on helping people with sound-induced tinnitus. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, is be careful uh, around loud noises. Be very, very careful or leery of medications and 
listen to uh, full spectrum music, but at a low volume, you know, not at a high volume, like symphony music, uh, and keep your ears exposed to high frequencies, such as, like you said, nature, bird songs, or, uh, you know, symphony music, et cetera. Yeah, it, it felt just, you know, I thought that makes sense uh, because for many, many uh, years we didn't have exactly uh, symphony music and we didn't lose our hearing. So I thought it must have also something to do with nature. And also, uh, I've noticed a lot of people have hearing loss that work at businesses, that they have a cheap headphone in one ear and a microphone, you know, like the drive through window, those operators that are taking orders over that headphone, uh, that will also cause hearing loss. Okay. Do they know because that? Because there's no, there's no high frequencies in it. It's all voice frequencies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, do they know that? Is is that public knowledge? Oh, I'm sure it is. But, you know, as you know, many things are suppressed on the Internet. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. true knowledge, they do not want people having the knowledge of what uh, is causing medical issues. They want you to go to the doctor, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I and you know the, some of your com yeah, some of your commenters some of your commenters on your YouTube uh, where you might you posted my interview, you know mm -hmm. they were asking questions and I posted answers and I, they were removed, you know. Really? But not by me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. No, it's YouTube. Oh. Okay. So the AI removed your comment? <laughs> well, I I don't know what algorithm they have, but you know, uh I I've had many things removed from YouTube because you know, this subject matter is very taboo. They they don't want people realizing that the government has technology that can read their brain waves, uh send them artificial tinnitus, uh, you know, all of these technical effects on their bodies that, you know, that, that we are not to know about that. And, you know, uh, that's the main reason they edit my uh, comments, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, going back to that incident in uh, Cuba, I read about that. Uh, during that time as well and uh, people had very weird symptoms and I don't know if you have heard of it it is a new movie it's called leave the world behind and uh, it's the production company of the Obamas <laughs> funny enough and it oh. is a type of yeah I would say um dystopian movie let's let's put it that way and um yeah in that movie there is a point when you know all of a sudden in the house glass is shattering the the, the windows are shattering and uh, animals behave very weird and things like that and then um one person uh, after these loud tonic booms that everybody can hear and that shatters glass uh, one person starts losing his teeth have you ever heard of that 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 is actually possible that your teeth might fall out because of that yeah, there's uh, many different effects technology can uh, do to the body. And I actually uh, 
communicated with one of the diplomats that was attacked in Cuba. Okay. And yeah, he messaged on a forum I was on because I, I was posting about Cuba and he said, you know, he come on there and explain the whole thing. And, uh, we, I asked him even, do you think it, I, it, my opinion, it was Russia that attacked our diplomats to keep us out of Cuba because we were getting ready to normalize relations with Cuba and Russia mm-hmm. does not want that to happen. And I asked him, I said, do you think like me that it was Russia? And he, he said, yes. Mm-hmm. And Russia has a, a long history of attacking our diplomats around the world in the seventies. They hit our diplomats with a frequency that caused them to cry un controllably for no reason so they're actually able to control emotions electronically and attack people to make them look unstable etc you know and as far as the teeth go yeah if you hit the right frequency uh i'm absolutely sure in the right power density uh you could actually knock out teeth yes Mm -hmm. Yeah, and his they got uh, got just loose. He woke up in the morning, uh, started spitting blood, and then yeah, uh, yeah. a couple of teeth fell out just like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're entering a very strange uh, new world, and and you know we're entering a time where it, it, it's actually a psychotronic war and the people are in the middle because the people can't defend themselves that's you know most evil people in power really don't want to attack people that have a lot of power or weapons ability abilities etc they want to attack people that can't defend themselves and uh, you know go ahead Would you say that originally, let's say Russia, let's say, did they actually build it as a weapon? Oh, yeah. Uh, Russia has many psychotronic weapons, uh, as does many other countries. And this is why uh, the media really doesn't report on all of this, like in the 70s when our diplomats were attacked, the reason they don't want the average person knowing is because our government has the same weapons and our government uses them on other countries. So they want to keep them secret. And that's why they don't want everybody knowing about them. So they, they, you know, basically tell the media, you know, just squash that article. You know, we don't want people knowing about our abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not even sure that the media is fully aware of it. Well, since the Cuba event, it's 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 really gotten uh, out. I mean, you know, yeah, and and they're trying to stop, you know, everything about the Cuba event by blaming it on crickets. I mean, I've seen the most ridiculous articles you ever see in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it's just amazing how how they try to rationalize, you know, things and, and to make people uh, lose their ability to think correctly on the facts. You know, they manipulate the facts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is the end goal here? Do you have any idea? Because, you know, when I hear things like that, I always, where are you going with this? I mean, is there actually a plan? Is there a goal? What is going on? Sure. Uh, It's all about scientific profit. In other words, when they experiment on a person and they find out, oh, wow, we can send a small undetectable signal to anybody in the world 
and they commit suicide or they do this or they do that. We have the ability to control 7 billion people. Can you imagine how they're drooling over that power? It is greed. Uh, you know, power absolutely corrupts. And it's, it's scientific profit. Uh, it's worth billions and billions and billions of dollars to be able to remotely control human beings. I mean, it take over the world. That's the goal. Okay, so the only, the, the only the thing. No, go ahead. The name of the game is control. Yeah. Well, just imagine uh, if one country wins the psychotronic war and takes over the other countries and its own citizens. Uh, on a Tuesday, they can send a signal that everybody has to drink up all the orange juice in their refrigerator. The next day, the orange juice stocks will skyrocket. And of course, they cornered the market on the orange juice. So now they made, you know, X amount of money by just sending a small signal to make everybody drink orange juice. That's just one area. The possibilities are endless in their eyes, you know. You can manipulate every market. You can make trillions of dollars and and the whole time torturing your enemies, the people you don't like. Um, yeah, that sounds um, psychopathic. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly, exactly. And I, I can't, okay. If somebody is really, really power hungry, I can comprehend why they would grab for that. On the other hand, actually, I think these are very, very fearful souls. Otherwise, they wouldn't act like it. Well, you know, there's other aspects or motivations. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's there's spiritual things going on. Uh, yeah. A lot of people in very high places that have a lot of power are Satanists or, you know, worship darkness. And, yeah. you know, Satan whispers in a lot of these people's ears that, I'm going to give you the world and, here, you know, here's the technology you're going to rule. And, and, you know, so you're right. They are under a very strong delusion. Yeah. And, the, and, and I think these actions actually expose fearfulness because if you are so fearful of your fellow men, Maybe you need therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that is a, a motivation also, you know. Uh, okay, so one country or agency invents mind control. What if the people find out and, mm -hmm. and we get caught? So we better go ahead and just uh, advance this and remove the consciousness from everybody, and then they can't resist. And then, you know, so yeah, there's many motivating factors, and uh, and that and the governments do fear the people, and that would be one motive to uh, take over the people's mm -hmm. consciousness. You know. Yeah. So when when I think about assassinations, or let's say assassination attempts um, of high-level yeah, politicians, CEOs, whatever it might be, uh, the bulk of it is still pretty much the same as it always was, a hitman or a very organized hit against the person. So it appears to me that they don't use it that much. Is that correct or is it just my impression? No, no, that's not 
correct, uh, that appears what it looks like on the surface. Mm -hmm. But as I'm saying, that's the whole reason for this technology is to anonymously uh, kill people. In other words, they can send signals to interfere with the electrical activity of the heart. And it appears the person died of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. They can take uh, control of a self-driving vehicle, like a Tesla or anything else, and program it to hit a tree. It appears as an accident. They can take over the controls of an airplane and crash it because there's somebody on board that they can't allow to live. Uh, and it appears that plane crash was an accident. So there's many ways they can hide their assassinations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you said self-driving cars, that was actually in, in that movie that I just talked about, that, that was kind of funny, that scene. Oh, all, really? the <laughs> all the self-driving cars all of a sudden started driving all by themselves and they all thrashed into each other. There was, you know, for miles piling up um, self-driving cars and uh, <laughs> all, all these cars, um, yeah, they blocked the road so that uh, nobody could uh, get out of uh, that particular area there. Right. Yeah, that, that represents one of the biggest power grabs uh, that I've seen in a long time is the electric vehicle. Uh, you know, they want to be able to shut down everybody's ability to drive or to go anywhere when they declare an emergency uh, or the next pandemic they invent, uh, you know, so they're trying to quickly uh, get rid of the uh, gas powered vehicles. And once everybody has an electric vehicle, they can shut them all off by satellite anytime they want. And we are giving up our power to travel without restriction when you buy electric vehicle. Yeah. Um, but actually, that doesn't work very well. I know here, for instance, in Germany, um, the market for electric cars is down the toilet. Nobody is buying them. Uh, I know the right. United States have similar problems. Plus, yes. um, they actually, nobody can answer you, give you an answer where all that electricity uh, shall come from, you know, for electric right. cars, yeah. for pumps and what have right. you. And uh, people are noticing that, that especially here, the German government, you know, yeah, you can say we want everything has to be electric. Yeah, your heat, your this, your that, your car. Yeah, fine, but you have to tell people um, where the electricity is coming from. Because at the same time, they are shutting down uh, power plants here. Plus, yes. today, and uh, you, you know we had this uh, meeting, COP28 in Dubai, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> the finishing uh, resolution was we are not going to phase out fossil fuel. Yeah, they're going to have to reverse course and, uh, you know, give people options instead of forcing the electric cars on people. Right now in California, uh, many days a week, they put out uh, – you know, emergency broadcast, do not charge your electric cars from four to nine at night. Well, guess what? That's when everybody gets home and they have to charge their cars <laughs> because there's not enough electricity and they're telling people not to charge their electric vehicles. So if everybody in the U.S. had an electric car right now, the entire grid would go down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or what they... It, 
with the smart meters, they can, um, you know, uh, limit your uh, electricity so that you do have yeah. electricity for your lamp and your, let's say, your laptop in the house, but it is not enough to charge your car. That is also possible. Right. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of chaos, you know, in the future on many different subjects. Yeah, <laughs> no argument here. <laughs> and, uh, is especially here in Germany when it comes to the energy grid, um, it will be very interesting uh, in the next year. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I uh, was. I heard that uh, your country is trying to make deals uh, with countries in Africa to get energy, uh, propane and oil, et cetera, because you know that your country is in a very tight situation with Russia doing what they're doing, you know. Yeah, but this is not Russia's fault. I'm very sorry because our government was the one that said, oh, you are evil, we do not want to buy your oil, your gas, which of course is still coming into the EU. That it, it, it's, it, you know, and the oil is coming as well. It is a type of mixture. And then they call it the Latvian mixture, which means, <laughs> There is Arabic oil in it, maybe 30%, and then the rest is Russian oil. And I mean, honestly, if you look into a, an oil tanker, nobody can tell what is really in there. Right. It's ridiculous. <laughs> The, yep. These are just, you know, and even after Nord Stream, after... Um, the uh, U.S. destroyed Nord Stream, yeah? Uh, even yeah. after that event, Russia offered Germany because there is still one, <clears throat> one pipeline that is uh, not broken. They offered it, and our government said no. So all our problems are homemade. Yeah, it's uh it's a shell game is what you're describing. Yeah, it's it's don't look here, look over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, even during the Cold War, when that was at its height, Russia in terms of, you know, supplying gas, oil and what have you, they were always reliable, even at the height of the Cold War, because the Russians, they separated. They ha don't have this ideology. I'm not selling to you because I don't like how you think. To them, business is business and the rest is a different story. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's all t types of politics uh going on with energy and and it's it's going to create a lot of chaos that's why i uh, uh made a solar pickup truck a solar side by side uh little vehicle a solar cooker i invented a solar powered uh boat motor uh, there's many inventions I've worked on over the years to try to uh, avoid what is coming, you know, what is going to happen. I want to be my own producer of energy, you know. Yeah. But what do you do if the sun is not shining? Well, uh, there are batteries on the vehicles. And, okay. of course, you're limited by your batteries. Um, but you know, there. It, sometimes, you know, we get a couple weeks with no sun, and you're pretty well. You know, you, you don't have the ability to go anywhere. But you know, I do have gas vehicles, of course. But if you only had solar uh, vehicles, then mm. you know you would be somewhat limited. 
And what what I was planning on doing is having three solar powered pickup trucks instead of just the one I have Mm -hmm. and rotating, you know, like on Monday, I drive one on Wednesday, I drive the other one. And the whole time, the other two are charging. And even on uh, cloudy days, it does charge about 20 percent. So, you know. Yeah, uh, okay, for vehicles and uh, smaller things like that, that might work. But, you know, when I'm listening here, um, what I just addressed, where's the electricity uh, coming from? And I hear this nonsense. Yeah, we uh, have to build uh, more windmills. (laughs) Yeah, and what people you know, ignore is if there is no wind, there is no wind. And it doesn't make a shred of difference if 3,000 windmills aren't running or 30,000. If there's no wind, there's no wind. End of story. That's right. That's right. That's why you have to keep fossil fuels as a backup at least. Yeah, but that yeah. you know as a backup my goodness you cannot run a country like germany with windmills and solar power it doesn't work no no and texas found out uh, a couple winters ago because they've been yeah. making a big push yeah and they had one of the biggest coal freezes ever and the windmills just froze and there wasn't no sun and and all the water pipes busted in people's houses, and it was a mess. You have to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. And you cannot rely on the uh, solar panels, uh, windmills, or anything else just primarily. You know, you have to have a plan B, such as oil, gas, et cetera, you know. Mm. And by the way, who is paying for this nonsense? I mean, if all, if so many uh, water pipes burst, who is paying for that? Uh, the people themselves. <laughs> and they are okay with it? Well, yeah, it's, it, yeah, there, there's limited liability uh, with electric companies uh you know they're, yeah, they're, but at the end like of the, inter- yeah but at the end of the day it's the stupid politicians who set it in motion and honestly i think they should pay they should be responsible with their last shirt and penny i agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah in a perfect world, that would be the case. <laughs> yeah, that that is something, you know, I, I have a hard time uh, tolerating this, that politicians are never accountable. Right. Now they, they can literally uh, ruin an entire country and nothing follows. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. I I think we, my goodness, we have to change that immediately. Yeah. And, and you I, know, I'm, a lot of, go ahead. I'm amazed that people are so quiet. Yeah. Well, you know, that just goes again, uh, You know, there's many chemicals put in our food supply that are nonchalant chemicals. They they make you not really care about too much of anything. Where Mm -hmm. normally you would get upset, you get angry, and you'd storm down to the, you know, somewhere and try to get heard or, uh, you know, make calls or you know, you would react to an event. But many people around the world just sit there and and it's. There's so many chemicals put in our food supply, and 
that affect us also and our attitudes. Hmm. Yeah, that uh, is here in this country. It, it's very quiet as well. I think the other day, I, well, actually it was a couple of months ago, I read an article where I, I, I don't, I can't even remember what it was about, but it was uh, something that is, horribly going wrong in the United States. And I mean, there are a couple of issues that it could have been about. And, but one sentence at the end that stuck in my mind when the author wrote, Americans will do what they always do, nothing. Yeah. Yep, that's, that's a sad fact. Mm. You are right. And, yeah, we, you know, we've been dumbed down, you know. Uh, there's, many, you know, watching TV alone, you know, they found out that flashing lights affect the brain and they can cause different effects by flashing a green light and two white lights and you don't remember the green light. Uh, that was in the 60s they found this out. So they've had a lot of years of perfecting different technologies on us to make us uh, docile, you know. Yeah, that, bringing a TV in every home, that was, that was genius. Yeah. Yeah. And people are so hooked to that thing. Yes. Mike yeah, they Nate. found out television. They yeah. found out television puts you in an alpha state, yeah, a dream-like state. Yeah, that is why uh, many people fall asleep in front of the TV. That's right. Yeah, and uh, some of them they sleep with the TV on <laughs> the entire night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that's right <laughs> what does that do to your subconscious i mean come on you know 399 oh, yeah. and uh, here we go <laughs> yes you are sleeping that's right. but yeah it still affects you that's right yeah and that is why i always say no tv I, I don't have a TV anyway, but even if I had one, I would never put a TV in my bedroom. Never, ever. Yeah, that's that's very smart. So I think... What, yeah, go ahead. That's, you know, what we need to do is when we find out a technology is bad, we need to stop using it. You know, like televisions... Smartphones, smartphones make you dumb. You know, I, I memorize any phone number of my friends and family. I don't use contact lists. You know, I don't automatically dial anything. I, I memorize the number and it, it helps your memory. But I know people that lose their phones and they have no ability to call anyone for help. Yeah, exactly. They don't know what to do. Some people, if they lose their phones, their life is comes to a full stop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So we have addressed. Is there anything that might go wrong or what people should do and should not do um, when working with the city? Well, you know, like I say, the most important thing is to read the instructions and try to do exactly what it says mm -hmm. and to use the proper headphones. Yeah. And, you know, if the headphones fall off in the middle of the night, uh, you have to start over the three week initial time period. So uh, another thing that will help is put a sock cap over the headphones and they won't fall off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was because, you know, I'm uh, 
some people they go to sleep and they wake up in the same position i'm not one of them so when you said you have to start right. over with three weeks for me that would probably mean i have to wear it every night <laughs> because yeah. i always have to start over <laughs> well you could use the uh uh earbuds they're made by one more corporation i, I can't i can't you know that they, yeah they are so buds so that you you cannot hear noisy sounds i i cannot wear that it drives me I nuts see. because i don't like anything in my ears <laughs> my, own, my own blood circulating and, and no 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 i, I cannot do that <laughs> So I would have to use uh, a headphone, uh, yeah, headphone, exactly. And um, yeah, no, the buds, that is no option for me. I feel so uncomfortable if I try to put anything into my ear. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me yeah, too. Cool. So I hope we have eliminated all the confusion around it. And uh, yeah, people should check it out. Idiopathic tinnitus, reactive tinnitus, that is a difference. And read the instruction and use it not only for 15 minutes, then it cannot work. And it, you know, I do give it away free. I, I don't charge $2,000 like doctors charge for sound therapies. Uh, it, yeah. I, I give it away free except for shipping, $19 shipping at antitinnitusv2k.com if anybody yeah. needs help. Yeah, exactly. So, David, I thank you so much for coming. And um... You're very welcome. <laughs> And uh, so let's good hope... to talk to you. Yeah. And let's hope that, uh, yeah, people know what to do now, although it is in the instruction. And depending yeah. on the type of tinnitus, it might not work. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So thank you so much for coming. Um, yeah, guys, that was it. Night flight for today with David Case, and we see you all next time. Bye-bye.